Are you a runner or are you a cardio queen? You know what I'm talking about. You love the cardio, don't necessarily love the strength training. Maybe it's tons of walking for you. Maybe it's not running. Maybe it is running. Maybe it's anything. Stairmaster, elliptical, classes. But it's getting your sweat on. That really does it for you. So if you, too, find yourself injured frequently or always feel as if you're breaking down and you have to deal with it, you're going to love today's episode. So I've got a friend. Actually, she's been a student or what do you call this? A mentee. She's been a part of our mastermind for fitness professionals group for a year. She is a joy. She's been a fantastic student. She's also a personal trainer. She has a history of being an endurance athlete and age grouper. And if you're unfamiliar with that term, I realized that she and I threw that around and I mentioned it when I introduced her. But what that means is basically you are, we are all athletes, by the way, sister, if you're listening, but an age group athlete means you're somewhat most likely competitive. So you're really doing well. And Jen did. She, in her early thirties, got started and I'll let her spill the beans and tell you the way she was training, the way she was training injured. And then what happened after that? We unpack it all today. So I think you'll really enjoy this conversation. We also ask a question of you, an audience member or listener, about what makes exercise desirable, pleasurable for midlife women. And I hope you'll give us the answer in the show notes. I'm Deborah Atkins, and you're listening to Flipping 50, where I address your top struggles and concerns, and I share what to eat, how to move, and how to change your mindset so you can have the energy and the vitality that you want, need, and deserve in this second and better half. And today's episode is brought to you by the five-day flip. If you need a start, you need a restart, and you need one that is simple so you cannot fail. This is it. I'm going to share it with you in the show notes, but literally it's five days, each of them less than 15 minutes long. And the the emails come to you with the video link. And all you have to do is click, put your shoes on and click. And there you have it. You'll get a sample of helping yourself believe that, yes, you can find a way to fit it in. Okay, let's dive in. My guest today is Jen Shaver from Fit with Shaver, and she is a former endurance athlete. We're in a we're in a support group together, who spent years <laughs> doing <laughs> countless triathlons, full and half marathons. Jen didn't enter age group world of running until age thirty three, but once she started, the only thing holding her back was pain. During her competitive endurance years, she suffered bulging discs, anemia, and extreme joint pain. Looking back now, she knows it's because she didn't implement several important factors into her training as she was aging. And we're going to unpack those. On January 1 of the infamous 2020, when other people were making their New Year's resolutions to start running more as a part of their healthy habits, she entered running retirement. She finally ditched the constant pain. She focused on strength training, something that she had neglected for many years. And then in May of 2021, after over a year of not running, she thought that she would never don those shoes again. She decided to conduct her own science experiment. What happened over the next 18 weeks solidified in her, the importance of strength training for midlife women. And now Jen designs workouts that empower, don't defeat, and that help you realize that your best is ahead. Jen, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you, Deborah. I'm excited to chat with you today. Well, I really want to unpack that. So first of all, I mean, we've kind of hinted that uh, in May of this year, you dusted off your running shoes and started again. So what was it? What happened when you started again and and what transpired over those 18 weeks? 
Yeah, well, I decided I decided to add running first initially back in in about April um, through intervals. So on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I usually do um, you know my high intensity intervals, and those were going well. So I thought, hmm, I wonder if those are going well. What else could go well? <laughs> And when the Columbus Marathon announced that they were going to have a live in-person race this year, I thought, well, wouldn't that be something? But I didn't want to commit to a full, um, uh, you know, that that takes a lot out of you physically, mentally. And, you know, and I knew my body was not prepared for that type of um you know, activity yet anyway. So I thought, I'm sure I could handle a half. Let's see what happens if we do this. But this time we're going to do it differently because we don't want the same outcome that we've had in the past. And that outcome in the past was start training, get injured, continue to train while injured, go to the race injured, cross the finish line injured, (laughs) and then take months and months off because of injury. Vicious I, cycle. Yeah. It, yeah, it really it was a it's a, it really is a vicious cycle. And I did not want that again for many reasons. Um you know, number one, I I can't be injured right now. I'm I have ladies that I am training and I need to be healthy in order to train them. Uh so getting injured was not an option. <laughs> so, so I knew what- that yeah, what changes did you make? I mean, comparing, say, your early 30s training then to training now, what did you change? Yeah, I changed a lot. Um, you know, I I used to, I was really good when I joined my gym 20 years ago about strength training. And then when I did enter the endurance world, the strength training would kind of come and go. So it wasn't as consistent. It was like, it would take the back seat. You know, if there was a run that day or if there was a ride that day, that's what the focus was. And it wasn't the strength training. And then I was always injured. So I would add the strength training or I would go to my physical therapy. And, you know, I was such a good student in physical therapy because I would do my exercises and do the homework that they would give me. And I would, you know, graduate physical therapy and I'd be injury free until I'd start the cycle all over again without including those strength training. So I knew that this time it needed to be different. Um, and it, it it really just kind of happened because strength training has to be a part of what I'm doing right now because I am teaching strength training to the midlife woman. So it's part of my life as it is. So, so it's in there, it's built in, you know, it wasn't something that I could this time put on the back burner or say, oh, I'll do it later. And then never get to it, which was the case in my thirties. You know, and I also, there were, um, you know, I switched around. There's always all these extra easy days of running. And I took some of those out and I replaced them with strength training. And it ended up being the best thing that I have done for my training. So how was your performance at the half? It was my second fastest half uh, that I have ever run. My fastest being my very first one (laughs) that I did um, in 2011. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. After so much time off. Exactly. Yeah. And fewer days running. So, you know, I mean, I ran five days a week and in the past I would run six days a week when training for something, it would be six days a week. And I ran less. My highest mileage week, I was 44 miles, which in the past, my highest mileage week was for a half about in the fifties. So I ran less strength trained more. And, uh, got faster as I aged. (laughs) Perfect. Yeah. Love it. Okay. So there's so many women listening who went down this road. We all did, right? We all went on this journey. Were you a gym rat or home workout fan before the pandemic? And then 
what what happened during the pandemic? Are you finding you can get a good workout from home? Yeah. So funny. I joined the gym that I still belong to 20 years ago when my daughter was born. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's funny because when I joined, I was 26 and I was the youngest person in the gym because the gym that I belong to was created as a heart rehab center. It's a, it's a, affiliated with a hospital that's next door. So it was a heart rehab center. So <laughs> the clientele there, even once it opened up to the public was still, you know, 60s, 70s, and above. <laughs> so the 26 year old in there looked a little odd, but I was always there, you know, up until even when I gave birth to my son, the, the, the old ladies in, in water aerobics threw a shower for me. So <laughs> yeah, I was at the gym until, you know, I was walking laps just to get him out the day before he was born. Uh, so I've always gone to the gym. It's always been, you know, a part of my daily routine. And when the pandemic hit, um, the gyms closed and they closed for quite a while here. And when it opened back up, um, Because of the setup that I have at home, I didn't go back. Now, I still pay. (laughs) Here we are a year later. (laughs) I'm still paying, but I haven't been back because I have found that I There are a lot of gym owners listening who might say, (laughs) I wish you'd join my gym. (laughs) (laughs) It's horrible. I don't think my husband knows either, so... Oops. (laughs) Yeah. I just can't let it go. 20 years, you know, I might want to go back, but I just, I haven't gone back because I've been able to do it at home and get everything that I need. And clearly I was able to train and be stronger for the half marathon by doing it at home. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. So share a little bit. What's your, what's your ideal workout? How do you structure your time? You know, I, I always include in my workouts and my workouts for the ladies, I always include push-ups. And I think that sometimes many women are intimidated by that or, you know, have a fear or say, oh, I can't do those. And then I try to gently remind them that push-ups are all a perception, right? You might have this perception that push-ups are on the ground and they don't have to be in order to work the same muscles. So every workout that I do includes push-ups because I find them to be such a useful full body exercise. So I always include push-ups. Got to have those squats in there because you think about how many times in a day without thinking about it, are you doing squats? You're getting in and out of a car, right? You're getting up and off your chair in and out of, you know, whatever, you know, the up and off the toilet, right? So you're doing squats we hope. daily yeah. without without thinking about it, right? Right now, yeah, you don't have so to true. think about it, you know, mm-hmm. but down the road. So in order to be able to do that down the road, to continue to not have to think about it, you know, you want to be doing those exercises that are strengthening those muscles. So squats, got to do those. Squats, push-ups. Um, I'm a fan of a row anytime. <laughs> If you have that capability and you know, it, those are always great too, because you don't have to have weights. You can use a band with a row. So I, you know, I find those, um, are also great. I like to do the count, the compound exercises though, too, because you can get so much bang for the buck. And if you're short on time, they're a great way to get, um, all the muscles you need worked in a short amount of time. Love that. And a lot of women need that too. Okay. I'm going to ask this question because I think listeners, I'm going to invite you to share your answer to this question too. This is really a, not a rhetorical question, kind of a collaborative question, if you will. So when I leave you the show notes link at the end, I want you to come and and answer this one. But I think given 
you know, Jen, you're 46, I think you said. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so, I, you know, I've got a little on you. I'm 57, you know, and I know we've got lots of listeners who are approaching 70. So we've got, you know, the gamut of three decades here. But I think we're we're really a unique, you know, not just because of menopause and hormone changes, but I think because of the position position that we hold in our life and in our, our families, um, what do you think it is that makes a program appealing to midlife women? And I, I really hope you're listening and you're thinking, what's the answer to that? Because I know some of you Someone out there has not yet bonded with exercise. So what would that be? And and maybe the, the best or easiest way would be to think about what have you hated? What have you disliked about programs you've done before so that we know where where we're not going? But what do you think it is that gives a program appeal to a midlife woman, Jen? Um, I think there's a few things. I think number one is time. So as as a midlife woman, you know, you're in this stage where potentially you could be caring for your parents, but you're also still caring for your children. And then if you are working, so you've got a full plate. So time is a big consideration. And a lot of times what happens is who gets, you know, put on the back burner. Yeah. That midlife okay. woman, mm-hmm. you know, so, you know, she puts herself down because I'm down there on that list. And sometimes she even knocks herself off that list. So I think time is a big consideration for women when we're talking about workouts. The other thing is with that time is a lot of times women will say, oh, I just don't have time. And they think that the workout has to be, you know, this hour long session in order to be effective. And we know that that's not true. We know that, you know, maybe there are days when that 30 minute strength session, that 30 to 40 minute strength session does fit into the schedule. But then there are days when, you know what, that doesn't fit. And those are the days when you have to say, okay, what can I do in the amount of time that I have? I've got 10 minutes. What can I do? Right? I can do some squats. I can do some lunges. I can do some push ups. I can do, I mean, brushing your teeth. Your, your toothbrush goes for two minutes. Do squats for one minute, lunges on the left leg for 30 seconds, lunges on the right leg for 30 seconds. You just did two minutes. So I think time's a big consideration. I think the other big consideration is, you know, there's a lot of, um, a lot of these uh, boutique um, exercise places, right? And they incorporate all of these extreme moves. And then, you know, you go to this and you, you walk out and the first, the first workout, you're feeling great. And then what happens is you end up getting injured, right? From doing these extreme moves. And then you just fall off the wagon again. And you don't want to go back because what happened when you did it? So I think finding ways for women to exercise and move that are not extreme but that still incorporate the the exercises and the muscle building that they need in order to prepare their bodies for the future. Yeah, I love that. I'm, I'm not I, not a burpee fan, so yeah, <laughs> that's where we're going See, with that one. If you soul know, sisters, that's right, where we're going. Yeah. <laughs> if you're doing them, just love stop. that. Yeah, overrated. <laughs> uh, totally agree. Too many, too many opportunities for injuries on that one for right. me anyway. And I know well, there are modifications. for everybody though. You know, yep. I mean, there's such an yeah. exercise that unless you are, you are an elite athlete, I would say, you're not doing them in correct form. And if you're not doing them in correct form, then you're putting yourself at risk for injury. And then if you're injured, you're inconsistent with your training. And as we know, it's, it's just about the consistency with your training. So true. All right. So we know historically you spend a lot of time not strength training. You do now, but as we mentioned in your bio, yeah. what what would you say it was at one point earlier in your lifetime, the percent of cardio versus strength then, mm-hmm. and what is that percent of cardio versus strength now? 
Wow. Well, I will tell you, when I first joined the gym that, that I still pay for, <laughs> when I first joined, <laughs> I was meeting with a personal trainer on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I would do, you know, 30 minutes on the elliptical or 30 minutes on the treadmill or whatever. So I was consistent. Um, you know, I had a pretty consistent schedule and I, and I did incorporate that full body. Both of those days were 45 minutes of strength, full body with him. And he was great. And I was doing really well. And then I got into the endurance, you know, racing, which I loved, I, you know, the injuries were my fault because I was not consistent. I wouldn't change the racing that I did. I would change the way that I trained. And so what happened was I became 100% endurance. And, you know, now that's not the case. <laughs> at all. Yeah, it is. So it, it's, it's a very balanced um, routine that I follow now. And in fact, now that the half marathon is complete, I am not doing the endurance training because I, I, that I shouldn't be doing that year round. That's not okay for, um, you know, the hormone state that I am in. <laughs> I am 46 and, you know, all that endurance training is not good for my hormones. So it's okay to do it, but you have to do it smart. You have to do it different than you did when you were younger and you have to do it in pieces, I would say, not year round. Yeah. Love that. Love, love. And I, I think I can echo that. So a lot of, a lot of our listeners are probably familiar with my story. Some of you are not that I did the the eighth of eight Ironman that I've done in 2019. And the problem with an Ironman is that you do spend the bulk of a year and it had been a few years since I'd done one. So you start, you know, and mentally I committed in December the year before. So you start in January laying down that foundation. And that's, you know, 10 or 11 months. So it is a good part of a year and you're just constantly building up and there's no relief. And that's what, you know, spills over. And no matter how much you want it, there is no, you'll see calories in, calories out disappear. That equation just <laughs> simply does not work. No, it doesn't. Yeah. Yeah, backfires <laughs> on you. So for you, Jen, what would you say? What have the changes been? So if I think in fairness for our listeners, yeah. if they could see a picture, so clearly we're audio, we're not video, but right. you're a very you're a very lean woman. A lot of women would say we we don't like her, really, because she's <laughs> so lean. lean. She looks she looks great, right? <laughs> but but still, I mean, you it's all relative. Right. And right, we live right. in our own skin. What changes have you noticed as far as body composition, energy, and all things related to hormones because of the changes in your training? Yeah. You know, and I've also had, I should also mention that I, um, I do have a thyroid disorder um, and I had radioactive iodine back in 2004. Um, I had my kids very close together. They're 15 months apart. Um, you know, and I was told that that's kind of what set everything in motion with my crazy thyroid. Um, so along with just general hormones, I also have to be careful because endurance training, when you have a thyroid disorder also is, um, they're not really friends. <laughs> True. So yeah. Um, but it, you know, the changes in terms of it's just, you have to watch, I don't want to say everything in balance, you know, I, do I eat cake every day? No, but do I eat cake? You betcha if it's somebody's birthday. Um, you know, it's all about, and I hate that, that the whole saying life's all about balance, but guess what? Life really is all about balance because we know that too much of a good thing isn't a good thing, right? We know that too much exercise sends our hormones off the deep end, just like too much cake or too much sugar isn't a good thing. So it's just about finding what is working for you and for your body in order to keep you healthy. Love it. 
Love it. And mentally too, I think, right? Mm-hmm. So it's, uh, right. my guess is looking back. So we've been kind of talking all things physical, but when you look back and think of yourself when you were doing all the endurance training and not really mm-hmm. doing any strength training versus right. now when you've got a little bit more balance of, of doing some cardio, doing some strength, where's your mental wellness, fitness, and how was that different? Did it, was it changed? Yeah. You know, I will say that not only did I feel stronger physically because of the strength training, but I felt stronger mentally because I felt like my body could handle things better, knowing that it had the strength to do the things that I was asking it to do. Whereas in the past, I feel like while I had the endurance there, I don't think it had the body was ju- the body was breaking down and there were times when it shut down and you know when I didn't want it to but it did because the body is an amazing thing and it knows what it wants it knows what it needs and we have to as women we need to kind of focus on what our bodies are telling us because what works for me might not work for someone, you know, might not work for my neighbor. But, and that was something that I did get caught up in, you know, oh, well, so-and-so is following this method of eating. So I should follow that method of eating. And that wasn't a really good path, especially for an endurance athlete. And while it might work for some, it didn't work for me. And so, you know, finding that balance of what works for my body and how to incorporate the right foods and the right exercises for my body. Like I said, you know, I ran one less day, even though the plan that I was following called for six days. But I knew that that wasn't the plan for me. I had to figure out what would work for my body. Great points. Love that. What a great way to wrap up. Jen, where can listeners look over your shoulder, connect with you on social media? Where's the best place to find you? I am on Instagram and Facebook at Fit with Shaver, uh, under Fit with Shaver. And then our website is fitwithshaver.com. Sweet. Okay. Listeners, I will put the links to all three of those in the show notes. And that'll be at flipping50.com forward slash midlife women. And um, look forward to your comments. So remember, we asked you, what is it about exercise programs that make them appeal to you? And I'd love to have your answer to that question. So it is open for conversation. Jen, thanks again for being here. Thank you, Deborah. I enjoyed talking with you today. And listeners, what are you waiting for? Let's start flipping 50 today.